ARs, I'm going to um, go grab those from the balance sheet. But remember, in my balance sheet, I don't have 2010 information because of what we said earlier about uh, Chipotle structuring the balance sheet slightly differently in 2010. So I only have four years of historical balance sheet data versus five years of historical income statement data. For that reason, I'm going to grab ARs from uh, my balance sheet starting in 2011. And in my working capital schedule, I'm going to move over one column to 2011 and reference those in that way. Call of those green. Now the beauty of the way we structured our current lib current asset section to exactly mirror balance sheet is, now, is that we can now just hit control D and grab all our other items for free. Uh, ARs, inventory, prepaid, deferreds, and other current assets, which exactly mirrors our uh, balance sheet right here. ARs, inventory, prepaid, deferreds, and other current assets. Then I'm going to grab uh, my totals. So I'm going to hit alt equals to grab my sum. And I'm going to add a bottom border to indicate that's a sum. I'm going to do the exact same thing now with my payables. So let's go do that here. Follow that green. Uh, drag those in. Alt equals, sum, and border. Efficient modeling in Excel is what we want. Networking capital is calculated as total non-cash current assets minus total non-debt current liabilities. And then I'm going to drag that out. Uh, change in working capital or increase and decrease in networking capital is calculated as prior year's uh, networking capital minus current year's networking capital. And I'm going to drag that out and bold it because this is the road that's important for us to reference back out to the uh, cash flow statement. Um, I don't grab the change in working capital for the first year because obviously if I did that it would be 113 because I don't have 2010 information for networking capital given the uh, fact that we don't have a balance sheet for 2010, but that's okay. I think three years of historical data should be enough. Um, the reason why we calculate the change in networking capital as prior year minus current year is because when this number gets more negative, that means that um, uh, we're, in a sense, freeing up cash. We're able to, that means our current liabilities are exceeding our current assets, and that gap is widening. That means that uh, we're actually going deeper and deeper on credit, meaning we don't have to tie up cash to uh, fund the, those, uh, that networking capital. Instead, we're going on credit, which means we can then use that cash. We can deploy that cash for other purposes. Whereas when networking capital increases, when it becomes a smaller negative number or a larger positive number, that means that we're, we're getting uh, sort of increasingly in the black. We're getting less and less, uh, we're getting out of the red, so to speak. And so in order to do that, and in order to unwind that, we actually have to uh, use cash to bring those liabilities back up to par, and uh, you know, or, or we may be funding more cash into our assets. So that would be a use of cash uh, as uh, compared to when our networking capital is declining, that's a source of cash. It's a little bit of a nuance in uh, understanding how networking capital works, but the reason why it's important is because ultimately at the end of the day, the number we're trying to get to is what is the source and use of cash of our uh, networking capital? And that's what this row describes what right I want to do, here. Having filled these numbers okay. in is actually show you exactly where in the 10K I got them. So for stock-based compensation expense, you can get this from the shareholders equity schedule here in the 10K right here. Uh, it is, uh, remember, our shareholders equity schedule is a waterfall bridge from year to year from 2011 to 2012 to 2013 to 2014. And stock-based compensation is this row right here, right here, and it exists in every year. It's right here again. Uh, and so we do get a number every year for, uh, for this item. It is, uh, for the most recent year, $97 million. And if I go back here, you'll see that's exactly what I put in here, 97.618. And that's what, that's what's shown here, 97.618. The prior year before that, it was 64. Uh, 0.781, and that's what you see here, 64.781, and so on and so forth. And that's essentially how I went back year by year to fill in stock-based compensation expense. Some of the observant folks in the crowd might notice that in the cash flow statement, there is also a stock-based compensation expense number, which is added back because, as we mentioned a couple of video, videos ago, stock-based comp is a non-cash charge. And you'll notice that these numbers, 96440, 63657, 
are different from the ones we see here of 97.618 and 64.781, etc. I'm not really sure why that is the case. Uh, uh, the footnotes don't really do a great job explaining this, except to say that it's possible that, remember, in the cash flow statement, we're, not in, we're adding back the non-cash charge component of stock-based compensation expense, and there might be some portion of it that actually did have a cash component, and so that part is excluded in the cash flow statement. For these purposes, I would definitely recommend using the amounts in the shareholder's equity schedule in the 10K because they are likely to be much more accurate. The reason why, again, I use those there is because when you actually look at the footnotes, we just did a search for this, stock-based compensation, you will see that uh, here in this note, stock-based compensation uh, was 97,618, 64,781, etc., which is exactly the numbers we showed here, 97,618, 64,781. So, uh, that's just a little bit of context on why we use uh, the shareholder's equity schedule number rather than the cash flow statement number. Cool. Uh, moving right